this is kind of special glass. It's, it's called EDP glass, which means it's um, especially expensive, basically. But it's kind of a cool glass, cool, complex, interesting. Uh, you can get some kind of cool pinks and s sort of purple shades. And um, Lily needs some spacer beads uh, with this and black dots. So uh, this is a good opportunity for me to make these for you, but also for her at the same time. I think this glass actually is discontinued now. So it's a special moment. All right, so same idea. Now these beads are going to be, it's going to be a, a bagel shape, but then we're going to turn that into kind of a four corner bagel by adding four dots. And I'll show you what I mean. Quack, 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 quack. Come away. Pause. Touch. And then that thread left to right, left to right, left to right. This, each of these beads will naturally be smaller than each of those uh, last beads that we made because the glass rod itself is thinner. So if you if you use a glass rod that's even thicker than that, then then each one of your beads will naturally be um, bigger as well. So that's something to keep in mind because you can feel as you're as you're transferring glass. This is a good way actually to to you know get a sense of how to control the quantity of glass that you send. Uh, so that when you remake beads, you can you can um, know in advance uh, how big they'll be and how much glass they'll require. So, all right, let's set that down. I'll move to my strong hand. I'm going to melt this one down. Pop, 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 pop. Move to my strong hand for no particular reason. Just because. Right on the surface. Qua, qua, qua. Come away, let that settle. Now we're going to add dots to this bead. I switch back, but I only switch back after that glass is cooled. If I switch hands while that glass is still molten, it'll shift, it'll change shape. Okay, so I'm, sh I'm changing back after the glass is cool. And when I add dots, I want to make sure that the bead itself is always just cool, not hot. I don't want it to be runny. I want your designs will be cleaner if you if you uh, are working on a, a solid foundation rather than a, a shifting one. Okay. And in terms of building up, um, this is a stringer, by the way. A stringer is just a, a glass rod that we pull into a thinner glass rod, and we'll do that too later. Um, and, you know, how if, if I build up glass to make a bead, I hold it at kind of a sharper angle so that it falls up on the end and then I can send it. This is the same idea. I'm going to hold the, the stringer at a sharp angle and then, and then ball up uh, glass on the end of it and then leave it behind. And then that will be a dot that I'm leaving behind. But when I do this, I'm going to leave the flame and then touch and then come back to the flame and release and separate. Come back to the flame and separate, because if I separate while the bead, um, while these two are touching back here, if I separate like that, I'm going to I'm going to pull away a string of glass. So what I want to do is contact and then come back to the flame and then separate, because then the flame itself will cut whatever thread that I start to create. Let me show you what I mean. Build up that gather, leave the flame touch, come back to the flame, cut, and then turn it down so that it, it drips, and then turn it to the top, like that, okay? Same series of movements every single time, makes your life easier. Come away, touch, back of the flame, cut, get that bit to drip some, like that, and then turn that to the top. 
And the reason I turn to the top is because I want four of these dots, and if there's always one in that top position, I can always tell where my next dot should be. It should be right there. And if you do that four times, you end up with four dots, and they're equally spaced, if that makes sense. Touch. And drip it down a little bit, which actually centers it. And then come back to the top. And then the last one I want to put in between those two. Okay? Drip. Come back to the top. Okay? And I'll sit that down. Pop, pop, pop. I want to warm up those other two dots. Dots cool more quickly than the rest of the bead. So you want to keep them warm. But the thing that I want to do, I'm going to melt these in, not completely, but most of the way. But I, when they melt in, I want them to melt in at an equal rate. I don't want one to melt in more quickly than another, because then it messes with the design. It'll throw your design off. So the first thing I want to do is, is, make sure, is let the bead cool a little bit, okay? Not, not too much, because you don't want those dots to pop off. And shock, you know, when they when they hits when it hits the flame. But let the whole thing cool a little bit, so that when you come back to the flame, everything's at an equal temperature. And now I want to direct the heat as I'm rotating. I'm, I'm directing the heat at the dots, not at the bead itself, because I want the dots to to melt first, and they'll and they'll melt, and they'll enter into the surface of that bead. Do, do, do. and I can feel it melting and balancing and all those wonderful things, right? Come away. Let that cool. Now, if you just melt it most of the way, about, but not all the way, and if you put down four dots and melt it some of the way, but not all the way, you'll get kind of this squarish um, shape. Rather than a bagel shape, it's got four corners. Okay, so that's kind of nice, and it's tactile. It feels nice. It sits differently than a than a bagel does. So we're going to do a few of those. Bup, 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 bup. Got to keep that first one warm, but not molten, right? Get that next work area ready. Pause, touch, create that thread, and then a little left to right action. Tut, 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 tut. Left to right, left to right, left to right. All that movement's coming from my left hand, the glass bead, I mean, the glass rod is stationary at the back of the, the flame. First thing I do when I cut that thread is Head, the, head over to that first bead and warm it again because it's been outside the heat for a little bit and I worry that it'll get cold. Okay, so you want to be sure and always, you know, be thinking about those other beads while you're, while you're making the one that you're, that you're making. Okay, so I'll set that down and I'll switch hands again just because. When you're working on the second bead, the first bead is usually being kept pretty warm anyway, just because of its proximity to the, to the bead that's in the flame. But when you've got the third bead going, then that first bead is, is at risk of getting cool and, and shocking and cracking. So again, just keep them warm, keep the other beads warm, be thinking of them when you're working on your other bead. Okay. Pop, pop, pop. Keep that warm. Warm that a little bit. Build up my gather on my stringer. Right. Wow. Let it drip a little. Turn it towards the top. And then warm up both beads. Okay. Wow. Drip, turn it towards the top, and then warm up both beads. Wow. You don't have to make that sound. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, one more. And I'm making the sound. 
Aqua. Got that. Get it going. Okay. And now I want to get. Now I want to get some heat on that first one before I direct my attention to those raised dots. Again, heating the dots first, letting them enter into the surface of the bead. Okay. And then while that second bead is solidifying, I'll warm up that first one again, okay? Now we'll do one more. Boo okay, rocking and rolling. Up, 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 up. Come away, pause, touch, create a thread, and then create that the width of the base, and then lay that glass rod or that thread across the surface. Okay, and the first thing I'm doing is getting the heat on the first two beads. I'll come away, I'll cut that thread, and then get the heat right over there. Because I don't want them to suffer, cool too much, and break. So get everybody nice and hot and happy. All right, set that down. Again, switch. Don't have to switch. That's just what I'm doing. Nobody knows why I do what I do, but I do it. Now I'll melt that. So get those first two warm. Yeah. And then... We'll focus on that third bead. Stay, you know, right in the center of the flame. Bop, bop, bop. Always touching the surface of it. Pow, just make an impact. Qua, qua, qua. It's like touching the surface of a lake or a body of water that's not moving. Okay, and then come away. And as that third bead is solidifying, we'll, we'll direct our heat at the the other two. Okay. Ooh okay. Now, do that final set of dots. Warming up those first two. Alright, so. Qua. Drip it. Drip it good. He's way off center. Nobody cares. It'll still work out. Okay. Ready? Twa. Get that heat on that first two. And then the last dot. Trip it. Trip it good. Now. For the last time, we'll get those first two nice and warm so that they can be okay while I'm settling in this last set of dots. Twa, twa, twa. Okay, and then come away while that's solidifying. I'm going to flame anneal. So I'm going to get begin the process of flame annealing. And I'm flame annealing lower than normal just because these three are working at a different temperature than normal. It's not just one bead, it's three beads. And so I'm actually making things a little bit hotter than I would if I'm just flame annealing. But the idea is still the same. Pop, pop, pop. Get everything nice and warm and then start to kind of go back and forth like that so that everything f is going to cool at that same rate, okay? This glass is kind of a 
bizarre glass, sort of striking glass, really, in some ways. It's, it's uh, very bizarre, um, kind of cool. I just want to let it cool a little bit, and then I'll come back to the flame and strike it as I would um, like a, a, a transparent red, like this one. That's the color it becomes, and it starts out as that color. But this glass, too, in some ways, it's sort of, it isn't striking, but it, it does alter its color or, or its, its surface texture, almost, if you come away and then come back. It almost becomes a little more cloudy almost like it's matte. It's really an interesting glass. Why they stopped making it, I do not know. All right, so now I'll come away. See, each one has a little bit of a different hue to it in some ways. It's cool, though. I like those.